Hello everyone, happy Monday. I hope your week has started off nicely. Um, so I'm actually gonna start a bit earlier time-wise, time period, era-wise, than I set in the beginning. Um, we're gonna start out today with the late Upper Paleolithic and early Holocene of Egypt. Um, and one of the most important factors always with Egypt is the Nile, um, as you probably know from historic periods. So around 18,000 years ago, uh, the Nile was just like a sluggish river, but it was like 50 meters higher than it is today. Um, so there has been found evidence of seasonal occupation, um, and it was home to a lot of terrestrial animals, fish, waterfowl, and several types of grain, wheat and barley mainly, and tubers, uh, which also seem to be um, part of the diet. So during the early Holocene, the climate in the region, it changed dramatically. So this also affected the Nile um, with an increased re rainfall over the East African headwaters. The Nile started to flood catastrophically and was, uh, this has been named the Wild Niles. So the rainfall in the early Holocene, it has been estimated to be 5 to 15 uh, times higher than today. Um, today we have the maximum of 200 millimeters per year, um, and it has resulted in, in it resulted in lake levels up to 100 meter higher than today's level. So that's a lot. Uh, during the next millennia or so, um, the humid climate it changed to a more drier climate, and about 14 four four thousand years ago, the uh, the very arid climate we know today it developed. So in the late Upper Paleolithic, um, the Nile was home to a lot of human groups uh, uh, who uh, exploited the area for its resources. They collected oysters and shallow water fish, and occasionally they would hunt hip hippo, waterfowl and terrestrial mammals. And during the late Upper Paleolithic period, evidence of human exploitation is known from several sites, and I will mention a few here. So you have the Kadan culture in Lower Egypt, uh, Lower Nubia, sorry, um, and this uh, culture uh, is thought to have originated in Upper Egypt around 15,000 um, years ago, or BP, sorry, and lasted until 11,000 BP. So there is 16 assemblages of uh, micro uh which are named after the type site of Kadan. Um, I will upload a PDF with um, toolkits of the late Upper Paleolithic and Upper Paleolithic where you will be able to um, read and see more information on microliths. So um, the ones called lunates, they are the most common. And lunates, they are geometric microlith and a glossy sheen on the lunates combined with the presence of numerous grinding stones uh, found at Tushka um, found in situ, they indicate that a collection of um, weed-like grass called graminae um, played a big role in the Kadan uh, economy from around 14,000 BP and onwards. And the gloss shine you find on tools, it indicates uh, cutting off, for example, cereals. So in Upper Egypt we have Isnan, Isnan um, which are three large areas in the region of Esna, Nakada and Dishna and they have uh, yielded fairly rough Isna material. So Isna material stands out clearly because of the lithics and it's dated to around 12,500 BP but it's solely uh, on the association between um, surface sites and Sahaba Daru, uh, Darao formation. So. Uh, the faunal sample we have from the late Upper Paleolithic, so what they ate. Um, in the Nile Valley, we find fish, oysters and marsh plants, um, which be were a big part of the subsistence economy. So at the site of Trushka, uh, more than 100 hearths uh, have been found. Uh, with catfish, they were, dominated, they were dominating the sample. Um, the only skeletal remains from the catfish found were heads and vertebra which indicates uh, a specialized form of processing. And at the same site, and others such as, such as Makatma sites, which is in Upper and Middle Egypt, 
you have a large number of grinders uh, which have been found and they suggest that vegetable foods were an important part of their diet um, because you know uh, a grinder is to um, grind um, barley, wheat, etc. for food. Um, waterfowl, game and larger animals, they were also uh, part of the diet. So for occupations, um, a lot of the sites around the Nile are probably seasonal occupations and there is unfortunately not a lot of evidence of how the architecture was um, but the houses um, was most likely uh, constructed by easily obtained materials such as mud and clay which can be very durable when it's dry and also grass. At the site of Wadi Kubania, sorry about my pronunciation, there are indications that the Nile Valley also supported more and more uh, sedentary form of subsistence before the beginning of the Holocene. Um, and um, there was an overall increase um, in site numbers by the end of the Pleistocene, which suggests an increase in population site, size. Sorry. And then you have the site uh, Jebel Sahaba, uh, 117, which might uh, hold some evidence of intergroup uh, rivalry between these growing populations. So Jeb Jebel Sahaba, again, sorry about pronunciation, is located in the Nile Valley, but it is today submerged in the Lake Nasa, and it's very close to the border of Sudan. And the site is associated with the Kadan culture, uh, as we talked about before. So um, at this um, place or site, 61 skeletons were recovered at a cemetery and at least 45% um, of these remains were determined to have died from violent wounds. So this was uh, determined by the find of pointed stone projectiles in 21 of the bodies and cut marks were found on the bones of several other individuals. So women, children and men were in the sample with violent markers which contributes to the idea that this was intergroup rivalry um, that we're dealing with a form of ritualized combat, for example, sacrifice um, or between young men. Um, but the uh, sample would not uh, be this big if that was the case, and it would not contain humans of different ages or sex. So the skeletons have furthermore been dated to the same period, and killing a large part of the population would not be in the group's interest. So furthermore, some bones had healed and some um, of the scholars, uh, they believe that this uh, points to a persistent pattern of conflict in this society, which is a very appropriate theory based on the um, skeletal remains. So um, let's talk a bit about the early Holocene. So it's defined by climate changes. Um, it was preceded by the last gl glacial maximum, um, defined by a cooler climate. So with the Holocene, the climate um, became warmer and wetter. And this climate meant that the glaciers uh, retracted and gave way to forest and the more Mediterranean style plants. So large mammals uh, humans had depended on, like mammoth and woolly rhinoceros, sorry, uh, went extinct and humans started to hunt smaller game and there was an increase in the, uh, their gathering of plant remains. So, from around 12,000 BP until 8,000 BP, we have the wet phase. Uh, and during this time, the Saharan lakes gradually increased until around 9,500 to 9,000 BP. So about 10,800 years ago, there was a new but very short cooling period. So the glaciers, they did not return, but the food that humans depended on uh, at this time, game and plant materials, they would have been come, uh, become scarce for a bit, uh, for a while. Um, and the unpredictability of the Nile, um, it forced the people living on the banks of the Nile to be more mobile. Um, so they were really dependent on the fishing, but they uh, developed more sophisticated techniques involving deep water fishing in the main channel, as well as shallow water techniques. So catfish was still important to the diet, but many faunal samples now also included deep water fish, such as, such as perch. Um, and the people of the Nile banks, they developed strong bone harpoons for this kind of fishing, but nets were probably also in use. 
So hunting was practiced in both the Nile Valley and on the um, today um, desert margins, but back then uh, were savanna scrub and grassland. So the fauna sample included waterfowl, turtles, hare, gazelle, cattle, heart beast, crocodile and um, hippo. And towards the west, um, the permanent lakes, which we call playas. Um, a playa is a flat bottom depression um, found in the interior desert basins and adjacent to the coasts within arid and semi-arid regions. And they are periodically covered by water, which then slowly filtrates into the groundwater system, or it will evaporate until, uh, into the atmosphere. So this causes a deposition of salt, sand and mud um, along the bottom and around the edges of the depression. So when they are filled, it is only with a few centimeters of water, but many kilometers of um, surface may be inundated. inundated sorry. Mm. So these uh, playas they formed and it made it possible for people uh, to semi-settle here. And at the Fayum depression, uh, Holocene camps have been discovered and faunal sample includes um, evidence of the same time, type of fishing, though not deep water fishing, obviously, and hunting as the contemporary sites by the Nile. Um, besides using microlithic pro projectile points for hunting, they also mounted fish jaws as arrowheads. So the Fayum sites have also yielded huge amounts of um, grindstones accom accompanied by plant remains. And there are strong seasonal patterns focused on the playas, but camps in the surrounding plateau has also been found. And then you have the site um, Nafta Playa, um, and it is, as the name suggests, located in the same area, um, close to a playa. So the earliest Holocene camps uh, were tent-like structures, they were small. Some of them had uh, stone-lined storage pits, and the occup uh, occupants they hunted um, hare, rabbits, and gazelle. And Napta Playa uh, was inhabited through the Neolithic, and it will be covered further when we move into this period. So yeah, that was uh, it for the late Upper Paleolithic and early Holocene Egypt. I hope it was uh, not too boring, <laughs> and I hope you understood. Uh, what I'm saying. I'm sorry about a bit of mumbling maybe, but yeah. Um, and um, yeah, um, bye.